Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Now, before I start off today's video, I want to take the time to apologize to you guys. I know that I haven't been posting as often as I should recently. Um, and I kind of wanted to give you guys a little bit of an explanation as to what's been going on and why I haven't been posting as regularly as I used to. So for the past six or seven months, I've really been focusing on improving myself uh, not only my diagnostic skills, but also acquiring a lot of new skills. And so um, it kind of all started back in November when I ran across a vehicle that really just kicked my butt. Some of you guys might remember the Fiat where I did a part one video, but I hadn't followed up with the part two yet. Please stay tuned. The part two will be coming out soon. But essentially that car really just kind of took me to the limit as far as my knowledge, especially when it came to uh, programming and cloning computer modules and stuff like that because that car kind of became something a lot more complicated than I could really handle and so for me it was really kind of like a check yourself moment you know to where you realize that you know your skills might not be on the level that you thought they were or at least they weren't on the level that I needed in order to complete that job now that turned out to be kind of a big blow to my ego but honestly I think personally that's really what I needed was something to just kind of kick my butt and tell me you know what you're not really as good as you thought you were and you really need to up your game if you want to stay relevant in this industry so after the realization that I really needed to do better and get myself to that next level. I became obsessively focused on learning. So I've really been doing as much as I can to learn as much as I can about things like computer programming, computer cloning, module repair, and keys and immobilizer systems. That's really something that I found myself getting really into because I found it really interesting is the whole area of locksmithing. It's a whole nother side of this industry that before I really didn't understand. And quite honestly, before I didn't really have any interest in getting into that. I used to just leave the key programming stuff and all that to the locksmith professionals. However, lately I've realized that in order to do a lot of this stuff that we have to do in automation, Motive today, you have to have some level of experience and knowledge as far as keys and key programming goes. So once I started getting into keys and locksmithing, I found that I actually really enjoyed learning it. Now, not only have I been learning this stuff, but I've been putting it into everyday practice. I've now added locksmithing full time as part of my business. So as I've been learning more and more about computer programming, computer cloning, keys and programming keys, I really started to put myself out there more because I really wanted to get more hands-on experience. So I took the initiative to go out and talk to a lot of these different car lots and shops that were in my area and I started offering my services to them. Since then, I've really been able to implement a lot of what I've learned, doing this stuff hands-on day in and day out. And honestly, skill-wise, I'm on a whole different level than what I was six months ago. Now what I'm hoping is that I can share some of this information with you guys, show you a lot of what it is that I do, hopefully maybe help some of you guys that wanna get into this industry. I hope you guys stick around because I've got a lot of plans for this channel. There's gonna be a lot more videos coming out soon. But anyways, today I'm out here at this car lot. I'm here to do a few vehicles now i think today is mostly going to be computer programming and so i don't know how interesting this video is going to be but hopefully i can give you guys a little bit of insight as to what it is i do again the services that i offer these shops are basically uh, mobile diagnostics mobile computer programming uh, computer cloning and locksmith services so i actually keep a pretty good inventory of keys on hand because a lot of these car lots when they buy and sell cars you know sometimes they need keys for them and so i'm going to be doing some videos on how to make and program keys i don't know if we're going to do any keys in this video today but like i said stay tuned to the channel i'm going to be sharing some good information i'm also going to be showing you some of the tools that i use day in and day out like i said doing mobile diagnostics and programming and key programming and stuff like that requires a lot of different tools you know you can't just have one scan tool and expect you're going to go to a shop and when you get there you have the same scan tool that they already have so of course getting into a business like this it does require quite a heavy investment but if you're serious about it i think it's definitely worth it anyways i'm going to go ahead and jump to our first car i think it's a nissan altima if i'm not mistaken but uh yeah hopefully you guys stay tuned for the rest of the video let's get started all right guys so the first one we're going to attack today is going to be this 2017 nissan altima now the reason i got called out for this one is because it's got a transmission judder code stored in the tcm now i've actually been running across this a lot lately uh, especially since i've been doing a lot of computer programming for a lot of different shops and car lots and whatnot and so 
Typically, when this code comes up, you know, it could mean that there is something wrong with the transmission, if it's got an issue where the transmission is juddering. However, oftentimes the code does come up erroneously, sometimes intermittent. But the biggest problem is that once this code is set, you cannot delete it. If you try to go in there with your scan tool and try to clear the code, you're going to quickly realize that no matter how many times you try to clear it, the code never goes away. Now, I'm going to show you guys a quick, easy method for you to be able to clear this code. And today I'm going to be showing you how to do it on the X431 email plus now you guys may not be familiar with this but essentially this is the x431 with an additional emo function now emo of course stands for immobilizer if you guys didn't already know that but really that's just the tip of the iceberg this tool is so powerful it can do things like clone ecus clone tcms read and write eprom data do all types of special functions and calibrations honestly i've been itching to get my hands on this unit and i finally got it i've been testing it for the past few weeks and let me tell you guys right now this thing is honestly my favorite tool to use of course the unit is obviously smaller than your typical x431 pro 3s plus tablet and it doesn't include a kickstand on the back which for me isn't a deal breaker but you know i really like hanging these up on the steering wheel for you guys in this case we're just gonna have to uh settle for this Anyway, aside from the emo function, the intelligent diagnosis function, this is essentially the same as the X431 Pro 3S Plus. So this function that I'm about to show you can actually be done if you have the X431 Pro 3S Plus. So as you guys can see, it pulled up the vehicle information. We'll go into diagnostic. I'm gonna go into automatically search. We're gonna hit confirmed. Yes. Then I'm gonna go ahead and run a health report. Now, the only thing that this thing lacks that the X431 Pro 3S Plus does have is the topology function. That is something that was recently added to the X431. However, you're not gonna find it on this tablet yet. Now, whether or not they're gonna add it in the future, I don't know, it would be nice. I would really like to see it, but for me, it's not a deal breaker. Okay, so it finished the scan. And if you guys take a look here, you can see that in our transmission control module, we do have this P17F00 CVT judder. Now, while we're here, of course, we can run a report. There's our diagnostic report right here. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. Then we'll back out and I'm going to go into the transmission control module. Let's go into read fault code. And there it is, that P17F00. Now, like I said, this code is a code that no matter what you do, if you clear it, it will not go away. So I'm going to show you guys real quick. We're going to clear fault code. Yes, we want to clear the fault code. And it says here, clear fault code completed. We'll hit OK. However, when we go back in to read the fault code, look who's still there. P17F00. So how do we get this to go away? Easy. So we're going to back out of this. Then we're going to go into special function. And what we want to look for is this right here. Right IP characteristic replacement ATCVT. Now, previously, this was something that you had to use the Consult 3, which is the OEM software, in order to perform this function. But now with scan tools like this, we have the ability to do this without having to buy a subscription and without even having to buy the calibration file. Because even when you use the Consult 3 Plus, you still have to pay for the calibration file. This scan tool gets it for you for free. Don't ask me how they do it. I don't know how they do it. All I know is that it works. Now, this is not to be confused with these other two here, this backup characteristic TCM or this right. This is if you're going to be replacing the TCM and you want to save the information out of the old one and write it to the new one. The function we're going to be using is a function that's used whenever you replace the transmission. So if you guys ever run into a situation where you replace a CVT transmission, let's say you buy a used one, each transmission is gonna have a sticker up at the top and that sticker is gonna have a QR code. Now that QR code is gonna coincide with a certain calibration and that's the software that we need to write into the TCM. So this function is really important to have if you're going to be replacing the CVT transmission. In our case, we're just looking to try to clear this code because the customer isn't really complaining about a judder. They don't notice any drive ability problems so rather than just throwing a transmission at it and spending five thousand dollars we're simply going to clear the code let them drive it and see if the code comes back if it comes back then it might be something they want to look into but like i said at the moment the customer is not complaining about any drivability problems or transmission shifting problems so let's go ahead and click on it as you guys can see here, it's got some information. It says this function is used when replacing the CVT transmission. Before performing writing operation, check that the following serial number matches the one described on the CVT assembly. Never perform writing operation when the serial numbers do not match. Serial number is stamped on CVT assembly or described on the QR code sticker applied on the CVT assembly. I already took a picture of that QR code under the hood. I'm gonna show it to you guys in a second, but basically this is what it looks like. This is the picture that I took. Now, if you look at the code, excuse me. If you guys look here, you can see that we have a QR code and we also have the part number. 
Now, in the event that the QR code is damaged or you can't read it, you can still go buy these numbers here. In my case, I've been pretty fortunate. I've done a bunch of these, and usually, even though these QR codes can get a little smudged up, you'd be surprised how well this thing picks it up. So anyway, we're gonna continue by hitting OK. I'm gonna turn the engine off because right now it's running, and we're gonna turn the ignition to the on position. Make sure everything's on inside. I'm gonna turn off the AC to save the battery, and then we're gonna hit Start. Now, the first thing it wants us to do is erase the memory data. And the way it wants you to do that is basically put it in reverse. So we're gonna put this into the R, make sure you have the E-brake down, and then they want you to hold the accelerator pedal all the way to the floor. So I've got the accelerator pedal all the way to the floor, and we're gonna hit OK, completed. So now the memory is cleared. They want you to turn off the key and wait at least 10 seconds. So we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then we're gonna hit OK, turn the ignition on, and we're gonna put it back in park. Then we're gonna hit OK, and here's where we can select how we're gonna do this. In our case, we have a QR code, so we're just gonna scan the QR code. We'll hit scanning, and it's going to use the camera on the back of the scan tool to read the QR code. Now, rather than going under the hood, like I said, I already took a picture of it, so I've got my phone right here. Well, it's dimming. Hold on a second. Let me, there we go. So I'm going to scan the QR code that's on my phone. And there we have it. It picked it up. So you guys can see this is the right value right here. So scanning the QR code, this is what it came up with. Now we're going to go ahead and hit confirm. It tells you the IP characteristics data of the entered serial number will be written into the TCM. We're going to hit OK. Data writing has been completed, so yes. Writing completed, we are done. So let's back out of this menu. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the ignition off and then I'm gonna turn it back on. And then we're going to go back into the menu here and we're gonna read fall code. The code may still be there. We might have to clear it. So yeah, see the code is still there, but we're gonna go back and then we are going to clear it. So hit clear fall code, yes. Clear fault code completed, and now the fault code should be gone. No DTC is detected, further testing may be required. So there we have it guys, our DTC is no longer there. We were able to clear it. We didn't have to use Consult 3. We didn't have to buy a subscription. We didn't have to pay for the calibration file. Our code is now gone. We can move on to the next one. Now, just to show you guys where this QR code can be found, I did have to remove this intake piece. It was just two 10 millimeter bolts. And there was a cover that went right up here that had some plastic clips. But once you remove this out of the way and you look on top of the transmission, right there on the transmission rage sensor, that's where the sticker is located. That's where you're going to find your QR code. Now, on some models, they are a little bit more difficult to get to. I will say that on the Rogue, on those, I do find that I have to remove the battery and the battery tray because it's practically right underneath it. So in the event that you are replacing the CVT transmission, it might be a good idea to take a picture of that QR code before you actually put the transmission in the vehicle. All right, guys, so next up, we got this 2020 Nissan Altima with a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. Now, basically what they're telling me is that uh, the car came in, they had a check engine light and they had a P0101, which is a mass airflow sensor code. And of course they went ahead and they replaced the mass airflow sensor. However, the code still came back. And so if you guys aren't familiar, with Nissans and PO 101s. There's actually a technical service bulletin about these where in order to get this code to go away, you have to do an ECM update. Basically, I think what it does is that the updated software allows the computer to give a little bit more leeway when it comes to the mass airflow sensor in such a way that it doesn't set this code so often or so easily. So basically what I'm gonna start off by doing is we're going to run a code scan. Now for this, I have decided to use my auto fix. This is the D1 Pro. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with AutoFix, I don't blame you. These guys are a relatively new company, but essentially what they are is they are a sub company to Autel. This tool is basically the Autel MS906 with a much cheaper price tag. Software wise, it is basically the same tool, though I believe hardware wise, it may be a little bit different. This one is on a different tablet. And as you guys can see, uh, there is no kickstand on the back. So it's another one of those that I can't just put up on the steering wheel. No big deal. Again, it's not a deal breaker, but if you guys take a look, now some of you Autel users may recognize this interface. Basically, like I said, this is the same as the Autel. 
even if you scroll over here to the right, you can see that uh, we can also use the maxi viewer. We can use the maxi scope. So we have the functionality here of using the lab scope that the Autel uses. And so if you guys are looking for an alternative to buying an Autel, this may be what you guys are looking for. This thing even registers using your Autel online account. And so when you go to register this tool, you do it through the Autel website. That's how legitimate this tool is. It is not a knockoff. This is just another brand of Autel products. Now I've been testing this unit now for about two months and I'll tell you guys right now, this thing is awesome. It's a full blown professional level diagnostic tool. It can do things like read and clear trouble codes, active test, bi-directional controls, special functions, calibrations, even module coding and programming on some vehicles. Now with this being an Autel, I wouldn't expect anything less. Of course, Autel is one of the companies at the top of the scan tool game. Their products are really hard to beat. So anyway, I'm gonna start off by going into the diagnostic menu. And here I'm gonna do an automatic detect. This is a Nissan. We are doing a standalone diagnostic. There's our VIN number. We're gonna hit okay. This is North America. Again, this is a 2020 Nissan Altima. So we'll hit okay. And here we have the main menu. We're just gonna go ahead and start off by doing an auto scan. This is gonna scan all of the modules on the vehicle and it's gonna show us where we have codes. So we'll hit fault scan. And it's running through all of these modules pretty quick. Again, this is a 2020, so there are quite a few modules on this vehicle. And there we have it. Our scan is done. And basically, we have three DTCs stored. Two in the engine control module and then one in the HVAC unit. The rest of these modules, you guys can see that we have a pass no fault. So we're mainly going to concentrate on our P0101. Again, this code was the reason that they replaced the mass airflow sensor. But even after replacing the mass airflow sensor and clearing this code, this code still came back. So we're gonna go into the ECM, and here we have the menu for the ECM. We've got ECU information, we've got trouble codes, live data, active tests, special functions, lots of different things that we can do. If we go into special functions, you can see we've got pages and pages of different functions we can do. So let's back out of this, because the reason we're here is we want to go into the trouble codes. Now again, we already know that this P0101 is a pretty common fault. And like I mentioned before, there is a technical service bulletin for this problem. And so what we need to do in order to verify whether or not the technical service bulletin applies to our vehicle is we need to back out and we need to pull the ECU information. So if we click on ECU information and you look up here at the top, you'll see the ECU part number. This is the part number for the software that's written into our engine control module. And so what we need to do is we need to reference the technical service bulletin. And if you scroll down, you're going to find that there's a chart. And if you find your particular software part number in this chart, then this bulletin applies to you and you need to continue with doing the ECU update. So in our case, you'll notice that the last five numbers of our part number is 9HE. 2b and that shows up here on the chart that lets us know that the software in this ecu is outdated and we need to update it with the latest calibration now unfortunately in order to do that we're not going to be able to use a scan tool we have to use the consult 3 software or nurse software using a j2534 programming pass-through device and so at this point i'm going to go ahead and set the scan tool to the side i'm going to go grab my laptop get everything hooked up and then we'll continue with the updating of this ecu Actually, before I move on, there is one thing I would like to mention if you guys are interested in buying this auto fix. Like I said, great scan tool. The only problem that I ran across uh, recently is, like I said, I do a lot of these transmission judder codes. And from what I heard, the Autel is supposed to be able to do this function. Like I showed you guys previously using the Launch X431, where the Launch has the special function to go in there and write the replacement CVT transmission calibration using the QR code. This auto fix doesn't seem to have it. So when I go into transmission, and I go into special functions, you can see that we do have the function to read the IP characteristics of the replacement TCM and write it back to the TCM. However, we don't have the function for replacement of CVT. That's the function that allows you to use the QR code in order to write the calibration. Now I have talked to Autofix about this and they are looking into it. So hopefully in the next update, maybe they can add it in. All right, guys, so we're back. Now let me show you my setup over here. You can see I've got my laptop and we've got Consult 3 Plus pulled up. Over here, I've got my pass-through J2534 uh, programming device. This here is the Snap-on Pass-through Pro 4. 
Uh, this is basically like a Cardac Plus 3. It's just rebranded as a snap-on. And if you follow the cable, you can see I've got it running to the OBD2 connector down there. And over here, I've got the other connector running to my laptop. Now, I did already go onto the Nissan Tech Info website. I punched in our original part number for the ECU software, and it did come up with an update. Of course, I had to purchase the update. It was about $40. After making the payment, I was able to download it. I moved it over to the programming folder, and so now we should be ready to do the update. So I'm going to start by clicking on reprogramming configuration configuration we're going to check the little box down here then we're going to click next it's reading the vin number there we have it 2020 ultima we're going to hit confirm it's going to do the system call here we're just confirming the vin number and we're going to select the module that we want to reprogram so of course we're here for the engine computer we're going to click on engine turn the ignition switch to on it is on we'll click ok now in this case we are doing a reprogramming so it says here in case you want to reprogram ecu touch reprogramming so we're going to touch reprogramming as you guys can see it pulled up all of our information and so what we're going to do is we're going to save this then we're going to go ahead and check the box down here hit next now here is where you're going to see our current and our new part number after doing our reprogramming so again this right here is going to be our current part number the 237109HE2B and then our part number after doing the reprogramming is going to be a 237106AL5C. Now they give us an estimated time here of about 20 minutes of programming. So we got to make sure that our battery is fully charged and that we have a maintainer on it. So I'm going to go ahead and click next and it's going to begin our programming. So I'll get back to you guys once this is done. So let me go ahead and show you guys what I'm using to maintain the battery while we're doing our programming. This over here is a Tornado T90000 made by Top Don. Now this unit, I've had it for a couple of months now and I've been using it regularly day in and day out. And let me tell you guys, this thing is powerful, lightweight, compact, very robust and very reliable. Now, if you guys are gonna be doing computer programming on any vehicle, it's a no brainer that you're gonna need to buy some type of battery maintainer and not just any battery maintainer. You have to buy one that can provide a nice clean signal. The voltage supply from this unit is super clean and that's exactly what we need when we're programming modules. You also really wanna have one that can handle a lot of amperage. Now the 90,000 can handle up to 90 amps, which is plenty of power to handle most all vehicles while doing programming. On this particular Nissan, we're able to maintain 13.3 volts at about 60 amps, all while both fans are running. I don't know if you guys can hear that in the background, but both of these fans are running on high. During module programming on some of these vehicles, the computer does go dead while it's programming. So on some of these cars, while you're programming, the fans may run continuously. While it wouldn't be a bad idea to just go ahead and disconnect the fans, in our case, we have a pretty powerful maintainer that's able to maintain this battery while running these fans. And also at the same time, I went ahead and connected my fully charged jump pack to the battery just to give it some extra storage capacity. So right now, I'm not too worried about the fans. So right now we're at about 70% as far as our programming. You can see it just jumped up to 80 right there. And if you look up here at the top, you can see our battery voltage. We're maintaining somewhere around 13 and a half volts. That's perfect. All right, guys, so it looks like our programming is complete just in time because it looks like it's getting ready to start raining. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all my stuff away. Then I'm gonna come back so we can finish the procedures that need to be done. And we are all done. So here we have our confirmation sheet. Again, you can see our old part number before programming and our new part number after the programming. Now, just to show you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and start this thing up one more time. You can see it starts up right away. And if we take a look at the instrument cluster, we no longer have a check engine light. That's a fix. All right, guys, so fast forward, moving on to the next vehicle. This one here is a 2013 Ford Explorer. Now, this vehicle I actually came about a week ago and I did the diagnostic on it because uh, what had happened was that uh, one of the ignition coils melted. So cylinder number three ignition coil completely melted uh, the shop. They replaced the ignition coil, but even after replacing the ignition coil, they still had a misfire. And so I came, did the diagnosis. Again, guys, I really wish I could have filmed that process. Um, I didn't, however, but basically to explain what happened is that whenever the coil shorted out, it took out the driver in the computer. And so as you guys can see, now they have a new computer in place. And so I'm here to program it. As you guys can see down here, I have my top Don connected. Take a look here. You can see that we've got 13.3 volts going. And right now we're actually in the process of programming. So that's why you see a lot of things moving. The wiper arms there were moving. So you're gonna see some things flickering. 
And if you look down here, this is my laptop. I've got IDS connected and right now it is doing the module programming. If you guys take a look over here, you can see I have my Autel J2534 programming device connected. And it looks like we are about halfway through here on the programming. I just heard the ignition click on right now. So if you guys take a look, you can see the ignition just came on. And it says here, let's take a look. It's necessary to obtain backup configuration data from as-built database before this module can be configured correctly. So basically it's telling us that we need to download the as-built data. Now we could go over to the Motorcraft service website where I actually have it pulled up right now. So if I pull open uh, my Google Chrome here, you can see that uh, this is our as-built data. Um, however, the IDS will actually automatically uh, do it itself as long as it's connected to the internet. So we are connected. We're going to click on connected and that's going to go ahead and pull up or download the as-built data that we need. Yes, we want it to search the network. So let's go ahead and do that. It says here the file was downloaded successfully. So let's go ahead and confirm. Okay, so here on this screen, it wants us to get the uh, tag information from the transmission. Let me take a look under the hood and see if we can get it. All right, so let me show you guys where the tag is located. If we look up through here, directly down at the transmission, let me get my flashlight here. Okay, so I've got my flashlights. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Right there is our tag. You can see it says uh, solenoid strategy and right underneath it, we have one that says solenoid body. That's gonna be the numbers that we wanna input into the Ford software. So moving back inside, you can see I've already inputted the numbers. We'll click the checkbox so it can download the calibration file that it needs. You can see it successfully located it. So we'll go ahead and hit the check mark. Okay, after a quick calibration of the module, you can see that it's been loaded and checked. Everything is good to go. It's telling us that it may have set some codes during programming, that's typical. So make sure we go in there and we do clear all codes. So at this point, let's hit the check mark and we are done. Okay, so at this point, our programming is done. We should be able to start the vehicle. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if we couldn't start it. Sometimes, whenever you replace a module on these Fords, you do have to do the parameter reset. If we're lucky, we don't have to do that. So let's go ahead and see if we can start this thing up. Got my foot on the brake pedal here. I'm gonna hit the start button. Okay, let's try that again. I'm gonna turn it off. And then I'm gonna put my foot on the brake again. And we're gonna try to start it. And it's not cranking over. Something's not right here. Okay guys, so I've got the scan tool connected. I went ahead and I ran a health report or a full scan of all of the codes. Uh, starting up here at the top, you can see that in the PCM, we do have this P 161A incorrect response from a mobilizer control module. And uh, here in the ABS, we have some communication codes. Um, but basically the one that's keeping us from starting this vehicle is gonna be this one up here at the top. And so, like I said, I'm pretty sure that we had to do a parameter reset in order to get this thing to start. That kind of does the handshake between the BCM, the instrument cluster and the PCM in order to get the immobilizer aligned. And so what I'm gonna try to do is we're gonna see if we can do the parameter reset using this auto fix. We'll go into hot functions. Uh, let's go into emo keys. Uh, here we have it, passive anti-theft system functions. Let's go over here. It's letting us know that this procedure is gonna take 10 minutes. So basically there's a 10 minute wait for us to get access to the security system. Let's go ahead and accept it. There's our countdown. We got 600 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the camera now and then we'll come back whenever it's done. All right, so fast forward guys, we have security access granted. So let's go ahead and hit okay. And now that we're in the menu, we're gonna go ahead and do the parameter reset it says here BCM, PCM powertrain control module. There's also one for the BCM RFA, but again, we're here because we replaced the PCM. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this one. It says, note, you are about to perform parameter reset. Do you wish to continue? Yes. Operation in progress. That was pretty quick. Now it says here, operation successful. Module reset is now complete. Note, after performing the parameter reset, press any button on the key fob for parameter reset to be successful. Turn the ignition off and then on. So I'm gonna grab the key fob, got it right here. We're gonna go ahead and push the lock button. The door's just locked. I don't know if you guys heard that. Now I'm gonna hit the unlock button. Then we're gonna go ahead and turn the ignition off and then turn it back on. We'll hit okay to get out of this menu here. Let's go ahead and turn the ignition off so we can get out of the security menu. Okay, we're all set, so let's go ahead and try to start this thing. Bam! 
started right up. The engine is now running. So far it sounds great. Let's go ahead and check the misfire counters and make sure that we fixed our misfire. Okay, so one of the functions that we have on this scan tool, if we go into the hot functions, is going to be a power balance test. I believe it's this one right here, cylinder. Yep, power balance. And there we have our line graph. You guys can see that it's going straight across. We don't have any dips. It's not showing that we have any misfires, so that's definitely a fix. All right, guys, so there you have it. A quick look as to what it is I do every day, day in and day out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something from it. Now, if you guys are interested in picking up any of the products that I showed in today's video, like I've said before, guys, I don't showcase anything on my channel unless I've tested it myself and I use it day in and day out. And that's exactly what I've been doing with these products. And let me tell you guys, these right now are my go-to tablets as far as the launch Emo Plus X431 and then also the auto fix. Now this D1 Pro, like I said, is basically just an Autel MS906 Pro. So if you guys are in the market for either one of these scan tools, make sure you take a look in the description because I will provide a link to where you can buy them and also some coupon codes if I can get some. I'll make sure to put those down there below too. Now as far as this big boy here in the middle, the Top Don Tornado 90,000, I don't even know where to begin with this one. Guys, if you are gonna be doing computer programming, you need a piece of equipment like this. I use this thing pretty much daily, not only when I'm programming vehicles, but also when I'm doing diagnostics. A lot of times the car that I'm working on usually has a bad battery, or if the diagnostic is gonna be lengthy, we wanna make sure that our voltage isn't dropping and giving us erroneous codes that are just gonna make our diagnosis more difficult. So pretty much now I've gotten into the habit that if I'm gonna be diagnosing a car, I just go ahead and connect the Tornado 90,000, keep the battery fully charged so that I'm never thrown off by a low battery. So like I said, if you guys are interested, make sure you check the description below. Amazon Prime Day is right around the corner. So if you're serious about getting into this, now's a good time to get invested. Anyways, at this point, I'm gonna end up the video. Like I always say, I hope you found it useful, informational, educational, entertaining. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.